I have an old hunting story possibly related to the Wendigo. I was 17 years old and my father and I had been hunting in Tungus, Alaska during deer season. We were a few miles away from camp and already returning from a successful hunt with only a couple hours of sunlight left. I decided to stay behind for a bit to map the spot we had so much success with, and I guess to sort of test the directional skills my dad had been teaching me since forever, so he went ahead. Around 20 minutes later I finished my mapping and started heading back, cradling my rifle as I walked and watching my steps because it was pretty damp at the time. Suddenly I heard some twigs snap to my right and I instantly get on my knees and hunker in some brush, because at that moment I had seen the biggest buck I had ever seen in my life. It was behind a considerably large tree and from my point of view all I could see was the head looking out to the forest in the direction my dad had went. I carefully raised my rifle and as I looked through my scope I immediately knew something was off. Its eyes were a murky white and the lining of its mouth showed signs or an infection or dehydration, I guess you could say the lining of its mouth was gunky, and to top it off the fur was much thicker and untamed. Then it happened it started moving. It came out from behind the tree gaining massive amounts of height and walking on only its hind legs. It was about 6768 and the overall look to it was that it was a deer carcass. It started walking in the direction of my dad. I wasn't afraid at this point, I had heard of some hardcore hunters in the area wearing deer carcasses as camo. So I lowered my rifle and yelled to it. Hey! In that split moment it turned to me and snarled like a freaking demon hound, I raised my rifle and fired a warning shot because I sure as hell never heard that sound before in my life. It wasn't phased and in that split moment it turned to advance towards me. I had no idea what was freaking going on at that point, because a large chunk of its ribcage looked like it had been mauled off but it still had enough strength to go apeshit. I relied on rationality and decided it was a buck with rabies, or something, just anything that could keep me from being afraid. I accessed that at that point I was in danger and as it started running on all fours towards me I fired a second shot and wounded it. It made the usual wounded buck noise, freaked out in some brush for a bit then got up and ran in the other direction on all fours. At that point I just put into my head that this was a wounded buck and since I had taken a shot at it I was then responsible for finishing the job, so I pursued it. I followed its blood trail so a nearby clearing but I stopped dead in my tracks because I heard a commotion involving a bear a few hundred yards ahead. Sounded like a territorial fight, so I got my scent downwind and patched my pits and groin with mud and started heading back, I was not about to mess with a bear. I found my father and told him the whole story, and he decided we should head back because a wounded animal is a hunter's responsibility, but it was too late so we saved it for the morning. The next morning the old man and I made it to where I had first spotted it. I explained everything in detail and he too figured it was just some sort of sick buck. We examined to foliage where it break danced in pain and found odd, very thin clumps of hair that smelled of mold. My dad said he'd never seen fur like it and added some of it to his pouch. Then we followed the blood trail. We got to the point where I stopped and I showed him the direction where the bear commotion had occurred, and he then pointed out to me that the blood trail went in the same direction. We both looked at each other in a moment of relief, because it seemed that nature might have corrected itself and ended my hunt. We followed the blood to a clearing and my dad stopped and quickly put his hand to my shoulder and pointed farther out to about 30 yards away to a dead brown bear. We made our way to it and examined it in disbelief. It had been mauled severely, its stomach had been completely gutted and its entrails littered the ground around it. Its jawline was severely damaged, like something was able to grab both ends and break its jaw with sheer force. My father and I looked at each other for a moment of freight and immediately dismissed our hunt and headed home. To this day we don't know what could have done that, but man it makes for a good campfire story.
living in Alaska, senior year of high school. Be in JROTC if you don't know, JROTC is a high school class that follows military regulations, teaches you about military history, etc. JROTC class takes a trip in the spring to an old Boy Scouts camp site. We arrive and get settled in. Me and three friends decide to explore some of the trails around camp before dinner. It's spring. The snow has mostly melted but still pretty cold. We follow one of the paths for a bit, then a friend says we should go off the main trails, he saw a rabbit off near the woods. Sounds good, let's go. Turns out to be an easy walk, really even footing, so we keep going. To avoid getting lost we carve notches on the trees to mark our path as we go. At some point we find a hill and stop for a minute to check it out. It overlooks an older, abandoned camp site. Kinda spooky. Take some photos. Pick related. I mention this spot because it was around this area that things got weird. We leave the hill and start walking again. Out of nowhere, start to feel pretty dizzy. Notice a couple of my friends fall to their knees. Hard to explain but feels like the whole forest is moving around us. After a minute of this we suddenly feel normal again and decide to keep moving forward, but something doesn't feel right. Start thinking maybe we got turned around, feels like we're going the wrong way. Uh oh. That's when the dizzy feeling returns. This time it doesn't go away. Comes in two or three waves. We're all struggling to stand, sense of coordination is gone. After a few waves, the dizziness stops, and that's when we see it. There's a set of wooden stairs in the middle of the woods, about four or five steps high. Looks just like a set of regular stairs but for some reason we all look at each other. Something feels really wrong, like something doesn't want us to be looking at what we're looking at. Get an awful feeling in the pit of my stomach. We aren't supposed to be here. Then dizziness kicks in again. Now, I'm a pretty outdoorsy guy. I run mountain trails a lot, and I have good balance, but this feeling was so bad that I dropped right to my knees. Everything is moving around me and I feel really sick trying to look around and keep an eye on my environment. See one of my friends fall flat on his face and stop moving. When I look at the trees I notice something that really made me feel scared. The notches we carved to mark our path are, are on a bunch of different trees, like someone moved them. Really begin to freak out, feels like the forest is trying to get us lost. Curl into a ball for about 30 seconds try not to look at anything. Feeling stops. When I look back up we're all in different spots than we were when the dizzy feeling first started. Stairs are facing a different direction too, opposite way than they were originally. We look back at our tree notch trail, and I notice it looks normal again. We book it back to camp. Get back sweating and feeling sick to our stomachs, two of my friends puked. Ask them if they saw the tree notches all mixed up on the trees. They say no, think they blacked out. We told our other classmates but of course they didn't believe us. When I got home I looked up stairs in the woods and read about it maybe being some voodoo crap. People say if oh you see them oh you shouldn't mess with them. I don't know about the voodoo thing but they are definitely not normal goddamn stairs. So slash x slash, I'm from Germany. We have tales about doppelgangers. Don't know if it's the same but it sounds just like that. Anyways I live in the south of Germany near Forest Schwarzwald. Been camping there since childhood with friends and their families usually annually or every second year. Here and there I remember our parents being kind of worried about something but it never was something big. Sometimes there were weird voices in the forest but hey, it's not a city after all. 
Now I'm 21 and we still go camping there. Nowadays without our parents though. Last year I had a creepy encounter I want to tell you about. Go to usual camping site with four buddies. Set up camps on the same place. Pumped up because everyone's always looking forward to this event. Celebrate first night at campfire with alcohol. One buddy stumbles away to take a piss. He's one of those men who can't pee with others around so he goes deep in the woods. Comes back talking about some other campfire. We laugh at him and assume he just saw ours from afar. Blame it on the alcohol and he gets convinced. Eventually take care of the fire and go to sleep hammered. Wonderful morning with headache follows a peaceful night. We enjoy our stay and go swimming in a river nearby. Get back to our camp and one friend hurries out of his tent. Someone went through his backpack. His stuff is spread all over his sleeping bag. Shirt and phone are missing. Go to check my tent and find my backpack emptied, too. Get alarmed and assume a thief. Everyone searches for their valuable goods such as expensive lights, money, and phones. Everything there, only friend's shirt and phone missing. Decide to look for footprints and find a trail in the coal leading into the woods. No boot prints but actual bare feet. Oh crap. All of us decide not to stay there and we pack our stuff. Take some time to get equipment back in our cars. Suddenly other friend's phone starts to ring. Guys you should see this. We run up to him to see that the stolen phone is calling. Robbed friend gets angry, takes the phone and answers. Listen that's not funny. Stops talking abruptly. Pale as a ghost. Turns on the speaker. Someone is talking slowly like a mad baby. In the voice of friend's dad. Everyone stunned, scared, and puzzled at the same time. Bravest one of us snaps out of it, takes the phone and shouts at dad. Dad hangs up. Dead silence all over over the camping site. Let's call him to find this guy and get the phone back, bravest one suggests. Nobody really stops him so he starts dialing. Hear it ringing in the forest. Ringing coming nearer. We get together, grabbing knives and shovel. See a shadow standing in the forest. Friend's dad calls out to us. Comes out and looks just like him only wearing his son's shirt and nothing else. Opens mouth and out comes gibberish again. We attack him and he runs into the forest screaming like a madman. Decide to stay together and follow him. He runs towards an open field with a dead fireplace. Drops the phone and vanishes behind trees. We pick it up and see other shadows coming from his direction. There are eight in total, all trying to form words. Now hear my parents' voice. Fear now rules our minds. Book it back to our camp, get in cars and freaking hurry out of the forest while calling the police. Didn't find anything but friend's shirt we talked with our parents about it. They panicked and told us that on some of the many pics you can see shades watching from the woods. They'd also see someone in two places at the same time although that wasn't possible. Until that day they put it up as bull crap but now that changed. Some of us are in therapy and nobody believes us. We never went back there. Scariest experience of my own is. Be me alone camping in woods. Been there a few weeks. Sun is going down, I have approximate 1.5 hours or so not quite 2 to 3 but over an hour. See three guys crouching around the woods, 250m across the river. I naturally crouch and watch, reach for binoculars and sit very still. They seem to be hunting deer, no firearms visible but one does have a buck knife. I am spooked at this point, mind racing, I think about what I should do. Run, contact, stay still. I am miles into the wild at this point, 
plus my belongings are all set up in a concealed slash camo camp and I can't just leave it all here to head blindly into the woods this late. My gut is telling me that they are not friendly, I don't know why but I just feel like if I speak with them it will not go well at all. I decide to stay on my spot and watch, they have come to the river now, slightly closer but there is no way they could see my camp as it was uphill in a strange spot, hidden between brush and trees, the land is shaped in such a way that you would have to be right on me to see me. It's getting dark now, they still are not using a light, and are moving slow slash looking around a lot they split into three and I lose sight of one, but he walked away from me whilst the other two cross the river and split. One is going the opposite direction, one is heading towards me, one is heading down river. I slowly move behind some brush and back off another 100 meters or so. Lie down and continue watching. My stomach drops. I've found you bitch these are our woods. The one that was heading closer has found my camp, this is when I confirm that they are looking for me, I don't know why or how. I have done nothing to warrant this, didn't even know the land was owned it was so remote. No dead animals, no trash, no wildfires etc. I can hear my things being thrown around now in a pretty loud conversation as they all have regrouped in my camp. Can't understand them but they seem to be angry occasional screaming and such into the woods around them, saying things like we know you're here boy, you're done, another that sticks in my mind is I'm gonna have fun skinning you. I lie still in terror. About 30 minutes pass but it could have been more slash less it's hard to tell at this point, it's getting really dark now and I see them heading back downhill and still hear them shouting in the distance. I lay still in the woods for another 20 to 30 minutes and thank God I did, not sure how much longer I would have lay there, but I wasn't eager to move, since I knew that they knew where my camp was. But I didn't know where they were. A goddamn flashlight turns on at my camp. If you're out here, you should call yourself lucky from now on, don't ever come back here boy. Deal.jpg I lay and watch the flashlight go into the distance, it's pitch black now so I give it another 20 minutes in case it was some kind of double trap. Nothing but silence, after a while I hear gunshots a few miles away, across the river where they headed earlier. At this point I just slowly approached my camp, gathered my gear as best as I could in speed, much was lost forever into the woods or possibly stolen, likely both. My tent is slashed apart, my sleeping bag sliced into bits with the insulation thrown around camp. My tarp has been pulled out of the tree and slashed up, cords cut. Gunshots again but they are much closer this time. I grab what I can and haul ass uphill. Spend the entire night moving north through the woods until I finally found S service road to follow. Followed it in the tree line just in case and was freaking out the entire night. Never went back to those woods, this took place in the southern remote US. Still don't know what they wanted, or how they found me or knew where I was. My guess is trail cams or that they found my camp earlier and came back looking for it as a group to teach me a lesson or worse. Be me. Live in Quebec, INB for Quebec fuck. Be 16 years old, in a woods with 18 years old native friend. He went to my school even though his entire family lived in a reservation. Looking for this deer his uncle or something had found dead, he was an art fag and wanted to burn patterns into it or something. Been walking through forest for like an hour, tell him how long it's gonna take. He says it's by the stream so anywhere from 15 minutes to 2 hours. Don't understand but follow anyway, not like I have anything better to do anyway. I hear water at some point, it's to the right of us. Native Anon, the stream's over there. He keeps walking straight ahead and doesn't respond to anything I say. Walk for another 20 minutes in silence and hear water again. Break the tree line and see a stream. 
Friend looks around, nothing to see, and mumbles something about the forest having taken it. I say let's look around some, it could be a little further downstream, couldn't it? He looks me dead in the eye and says no, we have to go. Wendigo has the deer. Don't know what a Wendigo is, my idiot brain hears Windex, like the glass cleaning stuff. What are you talking about native Anon, there's no Windes here. Take a big sniff of the air to make sure there's no glass cleaning supplies deep in the forest. That's the kind of autistic kid I was. Smell something like old blood, think it must be the deer carcass. Follow the smell for three steps, native Anon grabs my coat and pulls me back. Whispers into my ear run. He freaking books it, leaving me in the small riverside clearing. In the time it takes me to react and follow him, I see this kind of shadowy figure run towards me. Must have been at least 15 foot tall. I ran after my friend and the only thing I ever heard of that thing was a shriek as we ran away. Never went in a woods again. So I have this story saved for a long time now, and actually posting it first time in a nopey thread. 2007-8 forgot the exact time, but late 2007 or early 2008. Friends go exploring way in bumfuck nowhere around eastern Oregon. Get lost in woods for hours. GPS isn't working right after about the first two hours of hiking. Getting dark. Hearing animals in the woods, coyotes, and other larger game. Pull out SIG 9mm. Walk out into a clearing hoping it's the road. No road, just a large clearing with a small slightly beat up ranch house and a light on in the front room. Run up to door. Start knocking. One friend points out this could be a couple of old rednecks with a moonshine operation running. Holster gun and pull jacket over it. Keep knocking. Nothing. Door is slightly ajar. Push it open slowly. Call out hello, anyone home? We have been lost in the woods all day and were wondering if you could point us to the road. Hear nothing. Hello, we're coming in. Push door open. Three of us are in your doorway, anyone here? We walk in, the air just feels thin and creepy. I pull out my gun and start clearing the room with the light on. Really nothing in the room, a little stool and lamp sighting on it, it's a oil burning lamp, a old rotten couch. Go back into hallway and enter next room. Now where it gets dirty. Hear friend just scream bloody murder. Run back into hallway and into the room he's now standing with gun drawn and ready to go. See a very dry very old corpse hanging in the center of the room. It's nearly completely bone at this point, no cloths, and can't tell if it's a man or woman. Put gun away, looking around room. See a pantry that's just slightly open and hear a light noise like breathing. Pull gun, round chambered. Motion to friend to open the pantry. He slowly walks up and flings the door open. A man's body covered in flies and bugs, shotgun in hand his head just covering the wall. Not nearly as decomposed. Nope the hell out and run away as fast as we can. Look back, see figure in front of the light before it goes dead. Nope.png.avi.jpg.gif Whip out GPS, and check where we are. It's all kind of messed up. Screen keeps flashing on and off where we are but the lat and long are both zero slash zero. Shit shit shit, we're ripping thorough the woods. Stop and catch breath. Look at GPS again. See out location, but it is still blinking back to another one marked zero slash zero. We start walking back to our car we had saved in the GPS all the while it's blinking back to our previous location. Still have the heebie-jeebus. Fnali back to car. GPS is still flipping crap. Get in car. 
Friends holding GPS and says it's blinking to around the car, but like 16 feet off. See light in the wood suddenly. Light flies towards us. Oil lamp smashes on front of car. Nope 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 nope. Rip that crap into reverse and drive like a bat out of hell out of there. GPS still blinking. To behind us. After we get about 30 miles away the GPS goes back to normal. Never told anyone about it, never talked about it again. Biking with my wife. Area is kind of remote. We're about an hour and a half into the ride. Topped a really large hill. Found a dead deer. Looks really fresh. Blood is still wet. Ew gross. Coming down a large hill we just biked up. Nearing the bottom. Racing. I'm winning because I'm awesome. About to round the bend we agreed would be the finish. See something sail past the front of my bike from the woods. Hit the brakes hard. Have to turn to keep from flipping. Turn just in time see my wife flip. Slow motion. She lands on her knees. Kept going. Rolled head first twice. Little white tennis shoe flings past my bike into the edge of the woods. Christ. She is hurting. Jump off my bike. We wear helmet, pads, etc. cause we're dorks. She isn't too hurt just a little dazed. Get the first aid kit out and bandage up her scrapes and cuts. Check the bike. She hit what I saw flying out of the woods. A really large rock. Bent her front tire. There is no way she can ride it out. Han, I lost my shoe. Oh crap I forgot. Wander off into the woods to find it. Can't find it freaking anywhere. Search for 20 minutes. Screw it. Give her my shoe. Cut the pant leg of my jeans off. Wrap it around my foot with medical tape. Shoe. We decide to walk out the rest of the trail rather than doubling back over the hill. I carry her bike, she pushes mine. Takes about two hours with several breaks. Feel weird the whole time. Can hear something paralleling us from within the woods. It stops when we stop. Don't make a big deal about it. Kind of spooking me though. She is apologizing for fricking up the bike. I didn't even see that rock. Tell her I'm pretty sure it fell off the hill or something, thought it fly past me from the edge of the woods. We get close to our jeep. Something white on the hood. The hell. Get closer. It's her tennis shoe. There is no goddamn way. Sure enough it's hers. Has her name written in the tag. She is creeped out. I load up the bikes. We leave. Don't bike there anymore. Damn, might as well toss my story in. Be me. Living in a Asheville. House sitting for mother in Fairview. Her house is in the middle of bumfuck nowhere, halfway up a fricking mountain. Internet's spotty, phones crap, even landlines. Have two cats in a house. Neighbor one has goats and chickens, and a fricking rooster that won't shut up at 6 a.m. until about 12 p.m. Neighbor two has old dog. Anyway. About two months ago. House sitting. Have sawed off 12 gauge and a new, to me, LC9S. Currently doing a complete cleaning and oiling of LC9S. Have gotten to the point where I can assemble it in about 10 minutes at a calm pace with the booklet in front of me. About 11 p.m. Oiling the pistol in the downstairs living room. Here tap at door. Door wall is a three panel glass thing. Middle glass panel is the door. Look up, assuming it's the neighbor who lost a chicken again. Lolnope.jpg 
white skin, long fricking nails, black eyes, sharp teeth, short strands of hair, proportions all wrong for a human. We stare at each other for five seconds. It taps again on the window nope.jpg. Next thing I know, my LC9S is assembled, there's a round chambered, and the safety's off. Cat that was sleeping on the back of my chair suddenly hisses, launches towards door. The cat's not too bright, but has always been a territorial bastard. Once had a standoff with a police shepherd. I duck to avoid having my scalp ripped off by the cat. By the time I look up, the thing's gone. Sit there with pistol trained at door for what feels like an eternity. I holster the pistol, grab the sun off, and load 00-plated buckshot. Have flashlight, Africa rigged that to the shotgun barrel. Tactically exit house, hearts pounding like a fricking jackhammer. The instant I open the door, the smell of blood hits me. I gag, and then I hear it. Driveway's stone, not asphalt. Can hear it around the upper part of the driveway. Creep to corner of house, peer around. It's there, at the kitchen window, trying to look inside. Goddamn smell. About twenty feet away. 12 gauge 00, zero buck out of a 18 and a half barrel with no choke. 20 inch spread at 30 feet, give or take. Brace shotgun, attempt to get good beat on the unholy thing with my heart still going faster than a goddamn rabbit. Small corner of brain notices that there's no animal noises that isn't from the thing. No dog, insect, etc. Breathe, squeeze. Close eyes at last second cuz lol night. Boom. That shotgun's loud. Not as loud as the monster. Fricking roars like a lion challenging a rival. Turns towards me. Nope 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 dot jpg drop shotgun, pull pistol. Starts loping towards me, arms swinging by its sides. 7 plus 1 rounds of jhp in the gun. 7 rounds of FMJ in the second mag. Run through all 15 rounds. Goddamn thing isn't even slowed. Ah hell no dot jpg. Grab shotgun, sprint back down the small hill into the lower living room. Slap every single light on on the way. Grab shot shell box and 9mm box. Flip couch, move it into the corner. Get behind it. Load shotgun, reload pistol and spare mag, and never sleep. Spend rest of the night behind that couch. Greater than 11M rolls around, decide to check out the damage to the property. First stop, outside the downstairs door. Nothing on the stones, but there's something in the small garden plot. A footprint. But not a human footprint. Looked like a cross between an ape and a raptor. Next stop, corner of the house. Found, 1x shot shell, fired. 17x 9mm brass, fired. Okay, cool. Let's walk towards the front door. By some miracle, none of the pellets hit the house. Not found, any blood pools or splotches. Okay so I must have missed in my panic. Let's check behind the house for the obvious missing bullets. Behind the house is a big old stone wall, no mortar. Total of three impact marks. Three misses. Out of 17 9mm and however many 00, zero buck pellets, only three confirmed misses. Neighbor strolls in around 2pm, asks me if I heard anything around 12 last night. Why yeah, it was just a bear who got too nosy. Really? Where's the body? I, uh, missed. Anon it wasn't no bear, was it? And it wasn't no human neither, right? How'd you know? Lucky guess. You'll find a package waiting for you before sundown tonight on your doorstep. I suggest you use it. 
Dragon Dildos Incoming. JPG Sundown rolls around. Wooden box on doorstep. Open it up. Strange mixture. White ash mixed with salt. Coat every single bullet I had that night. I had a box of about 300 or so loose 9mm rounds. Slept in my bed for the rest of the week with the shades drawn, doors locked and barricaded, pistol under my pillow, and shotgun next to me. Neighbor never mentions it again to me or mother.